Well, thanks for the haircut, fellas. I feel about 10 pounds lighter. Say, where are we? Ted Hut. Hello, Dick Jet. Who the hell are you? I'm the leader of Antifa. My pronouns are she, her. He, him. They, them. Well, mine are vroom vroom because I identify as a 51 Chrysler. <laughs> Oh! Oh. Ah. Ah. He, him. My pronouns are he, him. That's much better. Now let us begin the interrogation. But first, we will have a land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that Antifa headquarters is located on stolen land. We at Antifa are committed to maintaining relationships with indigenous communities, both within and around Alexis? Hey, Dick. In 1958, FBI agent Dick Jett was kidnapped. Hey, what's the big idea? And cryogenically frozen by a diabolical Nazi scientist. <laughs> not what your country can do for you. I burn everything. I tear down this wall. Have such a you with us. He awoke in the future world of 2021, a terrifying dystopian apocalypse. <laughs> he started his own detective agency there, and now this G-Man from the past is solving the crimes of the future, the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Always keeping vigilant of the ever-present threat of international communism, he's the hero America needs. He is the Frozen 50s Man. Tonight's episode, The Corsican Dildo. Alexis, what's the big idea? Is this some kind of joke? Yes, it's all one big joke, and we can laugh about it together when you tell me what I want to know. I don't believe this. How long have you been planning to kidnap me? Just, uh, just a couple months. Months? Months? So while during the QAnon case you were scheming behind my back, what about that moment we shared in our office, huh? Or earlier tonight when you were giving me goo-goo eyes at the morgue? I thought we had something going. Did that mean nothing? This is bigger than you and me, Dick. One of my Antifa colleagues came to me with certain information that said you might be an enormous help to our cause. And I knew you wouldn't go willingly. What do you remember about the mystery of the Corsican dildo? I don't know what you're talking about. In 1539, a wealthy Corsican nobleman sent a golden dildo encrusted from tip to balls with the rarest jewels to Pope Paul III as a practical joke. But pirates seized the galley that contained the token and the golden dildo was thought to be lost. That is, until spring of 1957 when a certain FBI agent went rogue trying to find it. A certain FBI agent named Dick Jett. All right, yes. In 57, I sought the dildo. It was said to be worth millions, probably billions in today's money. But what possible use would Antifa have of that kind of dough? I am so glad you asked. <laughs> we plan to invest the money in marginalized communities, especially communities of color that have been most greatly impacted by systemic injustice. My God, that's diabolical. <laughs> And we are going to build community gardens in urban areas and food deserts so that people of all walks of life can grow delicious, nutritious food to feed their families. No. No! And we are going to build shelters for the unhoused. And we're going to staff them with top-notch medical personnel so that they receive dignified health care. Health care that they need and deserve. You bastards! And when these measures are enacted, they will help to free the American people from greedy corporations and ineffectual bureaucracy 
that has just somehow forgotten them. I'll die before I help you realize such a sick and twisted plan. Diggle, diggle, diggle. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, diggle, seriously, diggle, stop, diggle, stop. Diggle. stop. Seriously, seriously, diggle, stop, diggle, stop, 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 The year was 1957. I was in my prime then, one of J. Edgar's top G-men. My partner, Bing Fluffernutters. No nonsense, all American. Straight as an arrow. They don't make men like that anymore. You're looking cute today, dick. Thanks, Bing. Oh. It was 4.30 on a Friday. I was mere minutes away from a hot date with a spunk mag and an extra large tissue box when a figure with more curves than a horse track darkened our door. Is this the office of Dick Jet and Bing Fluffernutters, FBI? Uh, yes it is, but ma'am, civilians can't just walk into the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. I've got a case for you. See, that's not how this works. Uh, individual FBI agents are not available for hire by private citizens. Lady, how did you even get through security? I'll pay you well. As you can tell by all the dead, tortured animals I'm wearing, I'm a very wealthy woman. Oh, rich. Well, why didn't you say so? Bing, let's hear her out. She could be a Russian agent. Come on, would a Russian wear that much fur? <laughs> Good point. How can we help you, ma'am? The name's Dubois. Caroline Dubois. I'm from New York, a charming little neighborhood called Bushwick. Do you know it? Oh, I know it. I'm looking for my sister. I have reason to believe she's in town with a man named Chodeman. I'm sorry. Go on. Willie Chodeman. <laughs> I don't know where she met him. We've never been as close as sisters ought to be. If we had, perhaps she would have told me she was running away with him. He's no good for her. I've just got to find her and bring her back home. Have you heard from your sister? I sent her a message via general delivery. She didn't reply, but Chodman did. He told me she doesn't want to see me. I just can't believe that. He said he'd meet me at my hotel tonight. I've got to get her away from him somehow, but I don't know what to do. Well, it's simply a matter of having a man at the hotel this evening to shadow him while he leads us to your sister. If, after we've found him, and she still doesn't want to leave him, well, we have ways of managing that. I'll attend to it myself. Thank you. Oh, yes. Will this be enough? That'll do nicely. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Bois. Oh, she's a dish, all right. Ew, no. Did you see that icky brown color of her hair? Fluffernutters, dead? How? Shot in the gut. Where? The hotel at Bush and Stockton. Well, well yes, I'm, re I'm repeating everything you're saying. I... No, it's not annoying or weird. Be... Well, it's just how I like to retain information. Goodbye.
We need to talk. Yes, I think we better have. Do come in, Mr. Jet. Cigarette? No, thank you. Coffee? Too kind, no. Valium? I'm all right for now. Lysergic acid? That does sound lovely, actually. Late last night, my partner was gunned down right outside this very hotel. Yes, I heard. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Mr. Jett, I'm afraid I have a terrible confession to make. That story I told you yesterday, well, you see, it, it was just a story. Oh, that. Well, we didn't exactly believe your story, Miss Dubois. We believed your $200. You don't suppose it's my fault that your partner... I just couldn't bear it. Stop it. Bing knew the risks. Bing was just so... Alive yesterday, so hearty and solid, so full of electrical impulses and functioning organs. All right, that's enough of that. I got a dead G-man on my hands with no supportable explanation. If I get back to HQ without a collar, it'll be my head on the block, and J. Edgar will have me in a military prison faster than you can say repressed homosexuality. So spill, Miss Dubois. What's this all about? I'll tell you. I don't have a sister. I'm looking for Chodman because he was once my colleague. We procured antiquities together, you see, and he's in possession of a certain ornament that belongs to me. Them's the breaks, huh? So who killed Bing? Was it Chodman? Almost certainly. But you've got other, uh, colleagues in town? I can't tell you more than that. Oh. I will when I can, Mr. Jett, but you've got to trust me. It's better that you don't know. Be generous with me, Mr. Jett. You're so brave and strong. Lend me some of that bravery and that strength, Mr. Jett, and help me. Oh, please, you've got to help me. My, my. You are dangerous. What a performance. You could be in the pictures with chops like that. And not Cecil B. DeMille trash. Real cinema, like Plan 9 from Outer Space. Oh, but Mr. Jet, the lie wasn't in what I told you, only in how I said it. I am in danger. I do believe I'll be killed if you don't help me. I met a lot of hard-boiled eggs in my time. But, baby, you're 20 minutes. I deserve that. I deserve whatever terrible thing you want to say to me. Or do to me. All right, Peaches. I'll help you. You know why? Why? Because I love you. Wait, what? You loved her? Yes, of course. You professed your love to her after your second time of meeting her, after only knowing her for about ten minutes, and after she had been really sketchy and deceitful the entire time? Listen, doll, love was a lot less complicated back in my day. We didn't bother with things like getting to know each other and spending time together and telling each other the truth. We just latched on to the first woman to show us any attention and relentlessly pursued her until we wore her down enough to get married and then found out whether or not we were sexually compatible in a big surprise on our wedding night. It was a perfect system. Actually, you know what? I don't even care anymore. Just keep telling me the story, please. I returned home to my apartment and poured myself a much-needed drink. I'd been at Mr. Bois' hotel suite most of the day. The bad news was that she was still tight-lipped about the details of whatever mess she'd gotten herself into. The good news was that we totally made out and did kissing. A lot. Frankly, I was stumped. It was getting impossible to make heads or tails of this dizzy affair. So I didn't even bother looking for Chodman. In a case like this, you don't have to go out and find trouble. You just have to wait for it to find you. Willie Chodman? I presume? Oh, no, no, no. Mr. Chodman is no longer with us, I'm afraid. He passed away very suddenly. Quite recently, in fact. How recently? Quite. Hmm. My name is Thebes Karnak. You might say my profession is in antiquities, but my true line of work is as ambiguous as my sexuality. <laughs> Dick Jett, FBI. What's the reason for your unexpected call, Mr. Karnak? I'm hoping to recover uh, an ornament, a certain black statuette in the shape of a monster dong, uh, which, shall we say, has been mislaid. Uh-huh. I thought and hoped you could assist me. I'm prepared to offer 
on behalf of the Cox rightful owner the sum of five thousand dollars for its recovery. I am prepared to promise um, what is the phrase? No questions will be asked. Five thousand dollars is a lot of money. Oh God, oh God, I'm so sorry. Oh God. You will clasp your hands together at the back of your neck. I intend to search this apartment, Mr. Jed. I must warn you, if you attempt to prevent me, I will most certainly shoot you. Go ahead and search. There's nothing in here but hard liquor, ammunition, and pornography. Lots and lots of disgusting pornography. Please come to the center of the room. I must make certain you are not armed. <laughs> Ambiguous, my ass. Oh. oh, look what you've done to my shirt. Sorry, but imagine my embarrassment when I discovered that that offer for 5000 for the big schlong was just hooey. Oh, Mr. Chet, the offer was genuine. But it is only natural to try to save my employer such a considerable expense, if possible. And who is your employer? You will forgive me for not answering that question. In any case, I'm prepared to hire you on retainer. Will you take, say, one hundred dollars? No, I will take, say, two hundred dollars. And your ticket to the Judy Garland Film Festival. Oh, Mr. Chet, don't be cruel. Fine, just the money then. Now let me get this straight. You're not hiring me to do any murders or burglaries, but to get the Gherkin back, if possible, in an honest and lawful way. If possible, but in any case with discretion. Right. We understand each other. Oh, may I have my gun back, please? Oh, yeah. I'd almost forgotten. You will put your hands together at the back of your neck. I fully intend to search this apartment. <laughs> well, I'll be... Oh, go ahead, sure. I won't stop you. <laughs> Dear heavens! Slutty stepsister stuck in washing machine mukake. Hey, that's a classic! Oh, Dick. Surprised to see me? I wasn't expecting any visitors so late. You must forgive me for receiving you in such casual nighttime attire. Do sit down. You're not exactly the sort of person you pretend to be, are you? I haven't any notion what you mean. The schoolgirl manner, you know, the blushing, stammering, all that. I haven't lived a good life. I've been bad. Worse than you could know. Well, that's good. If you actually were as innocent as you pretend to be, we wouldn't get anywhere. I won't be innocent. Good. By the way, I, uh, saw Thebes Karnak tonight. You know him? Only slightly. Did he say anything about me? No. But he did offer me $5,000 for the big black book. 
That's more than I could ever offer you if I were to bid for your loyalty. Ha! That's rich coming from you. What have you ever given me besides money? Have you given me any of your confidence, any of the truth? Haven't you tried to buy my loyalty with money and nothing else? Well, what else could I value you with? Oh, those feathers, you know that I'm in love with you. Shut up and kiss me. Hold on. That's better. Yes, hello, operator. Connect me to the Hotel Derriere, room 420, extension 69. One moment. Thebes Karnak. Hello, Mr. Karnak. It's Dick Jett. I've just returned home from Miss Dubois' hotel suite. Ah, Mr. Jett. And how did you make out with my dear former colleague? Like this. But that's not important right now. I'm calling to tell you that the lady wants a meeting. Does she? How fortuitous. My employer would very much like to meet with her. And you. He's quite out of patience, you see. And we're headed to her hotel presently to wring the truth out of her. <laughs> Karnak, if you lay one finger on her, they'll be picking iron out of your liver. You hear me? <laughs> See you soon, Mr. Jet. God damn it. Don't touch her. I'll be right there. Operator speaking. Operator, connect me to extension 80085. Stat! One moment. Come on, come on, come on! Welcome to the 1-800-488-HOT-HOTLINE. What you wearing, honey? Mr. Jets, allow me to introduce myself. The name's Two Dicks. A Jimmy Two Dicks. I see you're well acquainted with my employees here. Come, join us. All right, Two Dicks. What's this all about? I'm here about the statuette, the black cock, as you well know. Uh, Mr. Jet, have you an idea of what that one-eyed snake is worth? Well, if I told you, if I told you half, why, you'd simply call me a liar, sir. Do you have the faintest idea of what it is? Well, I've got a pretty good idea of what it's supposed to look like. And I've seen the value in human life you people put on it. Indeed. <laughs> the dildo was forged by a 16th century Count of Corsica and sent overseas to the Pope so that it could adorn the halls of the Vatican. The whole shaft was encrusted with gold and inlaid with the finest of jewels. The priceless treasure was shipped to the continent on a galley. But, alas... Captured by pirates. <laughs> Never made it to Rome. In 1713, it appeared in Sicily. Then, in 1885, it popped up in Paris. By then, it acquired a black enamel so that it looked nothing more than a well-used erotic statuette. It was kicked around Europe for some years among private owners, too stupid to realize what they had. Until... 1940, when a dealer in Athens, a good Greek boy named Patrick O'Malley, found it in an obscure shop, O'Malley made his discovery well known and paid for it with his life. For my own part, I have traced the dildo hither and yon since then. Recently, I traced it to the home of a Turkish general by the name of Sigurdor Fyodor Olofsson. He had no idea what he had. So I made him an offer for it. But he must have sensed my enthusiasm for that wonderful reptile statue. He refused. So I sent some agents to get it. Well, 
they got it. And I haven't got it. And I'm a man who likes to get what he wants. Let me guess. Your agents were Karnak, Chodeman, and Mr. Bois. Oh! <laughs> How perceptive you are, sir! Just so! For 17 years, I have traced that dildo, and I'm quite certain that it's in this very room. Now, Chodeman was Mr. Bois' ally. I should have sent Mr. Karnick here to fetch the dildo alone. Dear loyal Mr. Karnick. <laughs> Because as soon as Chodeman and the girl had the priceless prick in hand, they disappeared. Is that how it went, Precious? Truth now. Yes. We betrayed him, and then Chodeman betrayed me. That's why I hired you. To find Chodeman and give him the works. God, I love you. But the one thing you failed to realize was that Bing Fluffernutters was a terrible FBI agent and a huge idiot. So when they met in the shadow of this very hotel, it was Chodeman who filled Bing with holes, and not the other way around. And then our dear Mr. Bois had to take care of Chodeman herself. No doubt, using her feminine wiles. At which juncture she decided to take the Corsican dildo for herself. Isn't that so? Yes. I have the dildo. <laughs> Clever girl. Not so fast. Ah, oh, how romantic. The things one does for love. Very well, I do not wish to be uncivilized. I shall give the lovely couple $10,000 cash in hand for the immediate procurement of this most rare family jewel. No deal, Two Dicks. The dildo is worth a hell of a lot more than $10,000. Right you are. I shall also give you one-tenth of what I realize on the timeless two methods. I've heard this story before. Later, you'll give us millions. What about now? I want 15. <coughs> oh, my God, Mr. Bois! You are a character, that you are. I'm afraid $10,000 is absolutely, positively all I can raise. And this is genuine coin of the realm. With a dollar of this, you can buy $10 of talk. Now, madam, the dildo. So it was in your butt the whole time. The perfect hiding place. I haven't pooped in weeks. I love you so much. Here it is, at long last, the jewel dicks will become three! But first, we must make sure it is the genuine article. No, 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 no! Wonder it was so easy to steal, you fool! You imbecile! All right, you've had your fun. Where's the real dildo? That's the one I got from Olafson, I swear! Stand here and call each other names. Then we go to Istanbul, the real dildo. <laughs> I've been on this quest for 17 years. What's one more? <laughs> <laughs> but 
the first. I will be needing my $10,000 back. Hmm. For my time and expenses. Oh. Very well, sir. Come, Mr. Karnick, to Istanbul! <laughs> So this is what all the fuss was about. A fake dingus. That's where you're wrong, Dick. That's the stuff that orgasms are made of. So that's it? You and Caroline just took the money and walked? Oh, hell no. I pinned the murder of my partner on her and turned her ass into the FBI. Somebody was going to go down for that and I wasn't about to let it be me. J. Edgar actually gave me a commendation for it, as a matter of fact. Jesus Christ. Where is the real dildo? Fuck if I know. Why didn't you tell me that before? Why did you have to make us go through this entire boring story? Well, you know, because stories like these aren't really about the plot. So much as they're about uh, the suspense, the mystery, the wacky and memorable characters. You know, just the general hard-boiled vibe of it all. You know what I just realized? You're an asshole! Alexis, that sort of language is not very ladylike. You're no brilliant detective. You're just another creepy old white guy who failed up. I'm not that old. Why am I even working for you? Why did I almost let you kiss me? Are you business partner breaking up with me? You know what? Yes, I am. Because fuck you, dick. And you know what? I don't need your advice. I don't need to benefit from your lived experiences because I am a strong, capable woman and I just need to live my truth. So you know what? You will not be seeing me on Monday. Alexis? What? I'm proud of you. Hello? Antifa? Is someone gonna untie me? LLC registered, office rent paid, address going on Google Maps. Why yes, I would like to register as a black owned business. A black owned woman led business. <laughs> now to let the guilty white liberals come rolling in. Yes, how can I help? Good evening, Fraulein. I have a case for you. Nope.